Amen. And uh, of course, uh, Jennifer and, and uh, Desiree, everybody else, Lord bless you all. Amen. Uh, remember uh, a couple of announcements. Do you remember tonight at five? I'm going to be preaching about something that y'all have probably never dealt with before, but I'm going to talk about stress. Uh, I'm going to talk about stress. How many of you could use a message about stress? Good. How many can use a message about stress right about now? <laughs> well, praise the Lord. Um, sometimes the best things happen or come when you wait. How many know food tastes better when you wait a little bit? Sister Miranda, she made some uh, chocolate chip cookies the other day. Oh, I don't know. Right when they come out of the oven, those are good. Yeah. It is, it's like you're eating cookie batter that's hot and melty. And, oh, it was so good. And, uh, she even burnt some of them. Amen. But that was okay. Amen. Just well done cookies. That's all right. Amen. Uh, but we're going to talk about stress tonight. Uh, of, course, of course, remember uh, Wednesday night, Brother Rick will be ministering. And uh, good, fr uh, good Friday service, April 15th at 6 o'clock. And Easter Sunday fun day. All right. So we're going to be having a potluck, a giant potluck after our Sunday morning service. There will be no p.m. service uh, on Easter, but uh, that's because we're going to be doing a Good Friday service. Uh, of course, a big Sunday morning service uh, with the potluck following. Amen. So uh, remember all of those announcements. Uh, at this time, turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles to the book of James. Amen. The book of James, chapter number 1 and verse number 12. James 1 and 12. And when you get there, shout Jesus. Johnny there and nobody else. But uh, hey, if you can't find it, just look on the TV and, and it'll pop up right there. James 1 and 12. Amen. The scripture says this. Blessed is the man. Say, or woman. <laughs> or woman. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. You look up that word temptation. It actually means testing. How many of you like tests? How many of you struggle with tests? Oh, yes. Depends on the test. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation or testing. For when he is tried, or after he comes through that test, he shall receive a crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Oh, what a promise. If you love Jesus, there's a crown of life that awaits you in that land called heaven. Amen. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I just want to preach for a moment or two upon the thought of a few reasons to keep going. Amen. A few reasons to keep going. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you so much for your spirit that is here today. We thank you, Lord, for everyone else that is here today. We ask you that you would give us ears to hear, hearts to receive, minds able to comprehend what you are saying. We pray over our teachers uh, downstairs that you would anoint Brother Ray once again and anoint Sister Linda as they teach and work with our children. We just thank you for all of our teachers. Bless them, I pray. Give our children ears to hear, minds able to comprehend, hearts to receive. We're at now we bind uh, distraction from the outside to the inside. It will not work nor prevail for the word of God. will go forth and accomplish its intended purpose. Lord, we just ask all of this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 A while back, I was cleaning up a yard, and I got about halfway through the job, and I realized that I didn't charge the individual nearly enough money. How many ever started a job, but you realize you underbid yourself? Yeah, that's, not a, that's not a good thing uh, to do. It was cold outside, it was wet, so the grass was up to my waist, and it, was, it wasn't grass, really it was these weird weeds that grow up out of the ground, and they just kind of, they turn into little trees, and I just thought to myself, man, I underbid myself, this is going to take me a whole lot longer than I thought it would, and uh, sure enough, I, as I'm out there weed eating and trying to get the grass down, I'm thinking to myself, man... You know, a lot of gardeners, they would just walk away. 
they would just quit right here on the spot and just say, I, this ain't worth my time. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have, uh, there, there ain't no really point of doing it. I'm not clearing enough money. But, but, but I, I told myself, you know what? These people, they know I'm a pastor. Hello. They know I'm a man of God. So if I give them my word, I've got to be a man of my word. Can you say amen? So what did I do? Oh, I just uh, I just kind of bit the bullet and I just uh, continued to keep going and, and I got the job done. And, you know, sometimes as a Christian, we've just got to motivate ourselves enough to keep walking. Can you say amen? Life can be difficult at times. How many know life can be difficult? Life can be stressful. That's why y'all need tonight's message about stress. And sometimes the trials and storms in life can seem to be unending. Sometimes it seems like just whenever you get through one storm, here comes another. But in those times, we've got a determined church to keep going. Can you say amen? I want to remind you that you have come too far in your walk with Jesus to turn around now. Amen. Oh, I'm so proud of Mark today. Mark has been walking with Jesus for what, five or six months now? But Mark, you've already come way too far to turn around now, dude. you got to keep going forward and keep pressing on. And I know Thomas, Shona, they've been serving the Lord, what, nearly four years now? That's a long time, but not really. They've just come too far to turn back now. Can you say amen? Brother Charlie has been serving the Lord over 70 years. I don't see how that's possible. He's only 48 years old. But he's been serving the Lord over 70 years, but he has come way too far to turn back now. Oh, how many of you know that we are living in a day and age when hell is going to do everything it can to try to trip you up and to keep you from continuing on the course? Why is that? Because Satan knows that he has but a little bit of time left. You think I'm the one interested in Bible prophecy. Oh, I bet you the devil's a whole lot more interested in it than I am. He knows that whenever he sees these things going on, his time is almost up. Pretty soon he, the false prophet and the Antichrist are going to be thrown into the lake of fire and he don't want that to happen. But church, the devil knows that his time is short. He knows his time is running out so he's going to do everything. He'll use everything. No matter or what it is to try to keep you from moving on in your walk with God. But if you're going to make it 70 years like Charlie serving God, if you're going to make it 26 years of following Jesus like Pastor William, you've got to determine in your heart there ain't nothing going to stop me. No person's going to stop me. No child's going to stop me. No storm's going to stop me. I see a finish line ahead determined I will cross it. Can you say amen? So today I want to give you guys a few reasons just to keep going. A few reasons to keep going. Number one, we've got to keep going because there's a finish line ahead. Amen. There is a finish line ahead. If anybody ever had a right to complain and I want to quit, it would have to be Paul the Apostle, the author of most of the New Testament. Paul went through shipwreck. He went through being in stocks and chains up in prison. He endured sickness, imprisonment, abandonment, lies, beatings, mocking, scourgings. He was left for dead. He was forsaken by many. You you name it, Paul had to endure it. But yet Paul, just a few days before he got his head cut off for the gospel's sake, he wrote to a young pastor by the name of Timothy. And Paul said, I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's the key. You've got to hold on to your faith. Paul said, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. Oh, although Paul went through everything we just mentioned, he determined in his heart to cross the finish line. Some of us have been going through 
unimaginable suffering and heartache. Oh, I'll tell you, I'm always so proud to see Brother Rick singing and preaching. He's going to be preaching Wednesday, just working for the Lord. Oh, he just lost his baby, Brianna, not too long ago. But yet I see Brother Rick right now. You're sitting right in her spot, brother. Praise the Lord. Oh, you see, but Brother Rick is continuing to go forward and to press on in the name of Jesus. Why is that? Brother Rick understands there is a finish line to be crossed and Rick has come too far in his journey to turn around and backslide now. Oh, I'm so encouraged by seeing Sister Edna today. Edna came up to me and she said, Pastor, I can't really talk too much today, but it's better that I'm here in church than sitting at home. Oh, I give you a great big amen, Sister Edna. Oh, it'd be real easy for Edna just to sit at home and get comfortable and say, you know what, this is just how I'm going to live my life now. I'm going to be as comfortable as I can, but that's not Edna's desire. Her desire is to be in the house of God, lifting up holy hands up to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It has come too far to turn back now. And I remember whenever I first met you over on Wilson or Woodrow Avenue cutting your grass. Oh, and Edna had told her uh, Edna had told her neighbor, I need a pastor. I need a church to go to. Uh, Edna's neighbor didn't go to church, but she knew I was a pastor. Also, Edna's neighbor, Linda, she, she tells Edna, you know what? I got a good pastor. His name is Brother William, and uh, uh, maybe you can go to church with him. Well, I got to meet Sister Edna. She come uh, into the church, rededicated her life back to Jesus, and been serving the Lord ever since. Amen. Oh, it don't matter what's come her way. Yeah, bro cancer may kind of come back and try to take her. All this discouragement may come. This sickness may come. But yet here she is. Look at this pretty lady. She's still serving God. Still working for Jesus. Still wanting to play the tambourine for Jesus. Still wanting to encourage her pastor. Still wanting to be in the house of God. Why? She realizes there is a finish line up ahead. And pretty soon I'm going to cross that finish line and I'm going to receive that crown of life. But that crown of life is not only available for, for Edna, that crown of life is available to any of us who love the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why don't you lift up your hands in this house and say, hell, I've come too far to turn back now. I'm going to press on in Jesus' name. I'm going to press on in Jesus' name. Well, preacher, you don't understand what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm going through. Amen. Hello. Well, I'm just tired, preacher. Everybody's tired. Oh, when's the load going to get lighter? It may never get lighter. Hello. That's right. I just, I just, I just thought it was going to be a Sunday school picnic. Well, it is, but sometimes Sunday school picnics can be in the midst of a tornado. <laughs> but God promised never to leave you. He'll be with you. He'll never forsake you, huh, Diane? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm tired. I've been through a lot. So has everybody else. They ain't been what I've gone through. Well, you ain't been what they've been through. We've all got a story to tell, don't we? <laughs> We've all got some tragedy and some obstacles that we've had to overcome. But the very fact that you are sitting here in the house of God is a testimony that you have overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Some of us have overcome child abuse. Some of us have overcome rape. Some of us have overcome drugs. Some of us have overcome alcohol. Some of us have overcome homosexuality. Some of us have overcome suicide. Some of us have overcome the abuse of our mother and our father. Father, but yet there you are still serving Jesus, loving Jesus. Why? Because there's a finish line ahead and you've got to keep going. Yeah. Say, I've got to keep going. No matter how tired you are, you just got to get up and go. That's right. Hello. Sometimes I don't want to go to work. Anybody else have that disease? Okay. We need to pray, pray for each other. <laughs> How do you pray for each other if you don't want to go to work? Pray that the rapture would happen. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I don't want to do all that inventory today, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, that would be a 
good time. Come quickly, Lord. <laughs> Lord, come back on tomorrow for me. No, don't wait till tomorrow. Lord, come you, you come back right now. I don't care about finishing the rest of this mess. <laughs> oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. That's why we go through the trials and we go through to loosen our grip on this world. Brother Rick, he's gone through a lot. With the passing of his daughter, you know what it does? It helps lose the grip yeah. on this world. I was talking to a customer of mine. His name is Jim. He used to be a, uh, a pastor at the South K Church. Uh, a few years. Did you ever know Jim? Talent. Yeah. Yes, talent. Yeah, for the gym. And uh, he's a customer of mine. Been a customer for several years now. And uh, just a really, a man that loves the Lord. He really does. Well, Jim, he, he lost his wife just a few months ago, maybe six months ago. And it was sudden. I had no idea she was sick or anything. I would see her at his house. We just kind of wave. And one day I was on Facebook and he said, I miss you. I'll miss you, honey. And I just, what? Found out she had cancer. And she had passed away. Well, uh, poor Jim, my customer, the former pastor, he posted on Facebook a couple weeks ago, Greg, my truck got stolen. I just thought, man, he's... Within six months, he's lost his wife, and his pickup got stolen. And uh, I guess he went to Costco and come out, and I thought I walked here. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> so I texted Jim just this past week. I said, hey, brother. I said... I said, did you ever find your truck? He said, no, they ain't found my truck yet. I said, I'm so sorry, brother. I'm praying for you. He goes, it's just material. Amen. What would cause him to say something like that? Because he knows I, my grip on this world. It's not what it used to be. Amen. I've got a wife in heaven that awaits me. I've got a crown of righteousness in heaven that awaits me. Well, can you lift up your hands in this house? Church, I'm telling you today, we have come too far in our walk with God to turn back and backslide now. What are you going to go back to? You're going to go back to the drugs. You're going to go back to the alcohol. You're going to go back to the times you didn't remember where you were the night before. You're going to go back to the chaos. You're going to go back to the confusion. Where are you going to go? There ain't no other place to go. Jesus looked at the disciples one day and he said, are you guys going to leave me too? Are you guys going to forsake me too? Oh, Peter looked at Jesus. Peter always just shared what was on his heart. Peter said, Lord, we ain't got nowhere else to go. We don't left our jobs. We don't left our income. Where else can we go? You, Jesus, have the words of eternal life. Oh, brothers and sisters, there ain't nowhere else to go but to the Lord. Amen. Can we say amen? A few reasons to keep going. Number one, keep going because there's a finish line ahead. Number two, there's a crowd cheering you on. Hello, there's a crowd cheering you on. Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing that we are compassed, that word compassed means surrounded, about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Say every weight. Every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The author of Hebrews gives us a picture of a massive crowd in the clouds cheering us on as we run the Christian race. Who are those that make up this great cloud of witnesses in heaven? They are the saints who have gone on to heaven before us. This heavenly crowd is mixed with husbands, wives, children, grandchildren, brothers, sisters, friends, family, aunts, uncles. Now in no way am I saying that our loved ones can communicate with us once they have passed. Hello. Well, I was talking to cousin so-and-so the other day. He appeared to me. What, no, what you were talking to was a demon spirit. Hello. 
Well, we were communing back and forth. Yeah, you were communing with that demon. That's exactly what you were communicating with. Oh, but I'm telling you, I do believe according to that scripture right there, Hebrews 12 and 1, that there are times in heaven that our loved ones can look over its balcony and see what's going on down here. And what are they doing? They are cheering you on, church. They're saying, come on, Marlene, you can make it, girl. You can make it to heaven. Oh, come on, little Phil. Me and Mama are waiting up here for you. Praise the Lord. Come on, you can walk with Jesus. You can live this life. Church, don't quit right now. You've got too many people cheering you on. Can you say amen? Sometimes you just need a little bit of encouragement. Hello. Sometimes you just need a little bit of encouragement. Well, that's what God is here doing today. He's letting you know you've come too far to look back. And he's letting you know you've got a lot of people watching you. Amen. Got a lot of people watching you. How many ever watch a, a game on TV or something and then you get all rowdy? Yeah. Oh, I know you do, Diane. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Diane get rowdy in church sometimes. That's okay. <laughs> I'm like Diane, man. If we can shout watching the 49ers, we can shout in church. Hello, somebody. Amen. Well, I don't believe in all that. Jesus never did that. Well, everybody Jesus touched did that. Amen. Come on. Everybody Jesus touched. Oh, went up and, and started running and dancing and shouting. Thank God for that. Oh, but I'll tell you what. Sometimes we can get so... Man, we'll be watching a game, and there's a, a, a buzzer beater. I played those one last night, the Final Four. I, I don't watch college basketball, but I heard there was a buzzer beater right at the end. And, oh, the crowd just goes crazy. Oh, I'm telling you what. The, the, I believe that our loved ones know just how close we are to the rapture of the church, and they're cheering us on. Don't quit now. You've got to keep going. Can you say amen? How many have some loved ones up in heaven? Amen. What are they doing? Floating around on clouds and nope. shooting each other? <laughs> throwing arrows? You know, you all seen the pictures of heaven, right? Like all naked babies on the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> With bow and arrow backpacks. And... Yeah. <laughs> it's not what our loved ones are doing. No, our loved ones are up there around the throne of God, crying out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Oh, they're walking on streets of gold. They're looking at a sea of glass. Oh, they're beholding the eyes of the Son of God. They're beholding the eyes of the Lamb, if you will. Oh, yes, you've got people in heaven that are cheering you on. So keep going. Can you say amen? Number three, you, you've got to keep going because quitters aren't allowed in heaven. <laughs> amen. Heaven isn't a place for quitters. Revelation 21.7 says, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. I will be his God. And he shall be my son. Amen. What's it mean to be an overcomer? It's to overcome everything that the devil throws your way. Amen. I'm looking at an overcomer right here on the second row. Sister Diane. She's an overcomer. She lost her eyesight in what, maybe 18 years old, Diane? Was it? How, how old? 21 years old. Been without her eyesight for a long time. But she's an overcomer. Amen. She's an overcomer because she's still walking with Jesus. Sister Edna, stage four throat cancer. But she's here every single service. Why? She's an overcomer. Amen. Edna's not a quitter. You're not a quitter. You are an overcomer. Sister Nancy, a lot of times she's not able to be here because she's taking care of Tracy, her special needs daughter. Continue to pray for Sister Nancy that God would strengthen her and help her. Sometimes it's not easy, is it, Sister Nancy? <laughs> She's like, Pastor Sky, it's not easy. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sky. You were just right there. I had to get you. Sometimes it's not easy. But yet, she got the prettiest smile 
out of all these people, except for Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> Good save, Pastor. Good save. How do you have a, how does she have a joy like that? How does she have a joy like that? How how would how would you be handling it if you had a child and you weren't gonna be around too much longer? How how would you handle that? I pray that you'd handle it like her. With a joy in your heart. You know why she has a joy in her heart? She's an overcomer. She overcomes fear. She overcomes discouragement. She overcomes depression. Sorrow. By the blood of the Lamb. And the word of her testimony. Why don't you stretch your hands towards Sister Nancy today. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for strength. Strength, Lord. I pray for help from heaven on high. Lord, touch Sister Nancy. Give her strength. Touch Carl. Touch Tracy, Lord, in the name of Jesus. She's an overcomer. She's an overcomer. How have you been in all these years serving God? You continue to overcome through the blood. Can you say amen? Number four, this is the last thing. Say the last thing. Last thing. Last thing. Praise God. <laughs> I can't get the rest of right now. Yeah, only old people would say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Matter of fact, we need to give all those clothes to Ray after church. Yesterday, Sister Miranda. Y'all like my new glasses? Yeah. 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 yeah, you look hot. If you think they look good, raise your hand. If you think they don't look good, keep your hand down. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> Miranda said, see, what I wanted, I wanted the gold. I wanted some gold 1970s glass, like gold rim. My dad used to have a pair. And when I put those on at Target, I looked at myself. I thought, man. I do look like my dad. My dad's a good looking dude. Praise the Lord. So then I thought, man, I really like that gold. Gold. One day I'm going to be walking on streets of gold. So I'm going to give me some gold rims on my glasses. Well, I, got, I picked out these ones. They're kind of half black, half gold. I like them too. Tell Sister Miranda that, okay? So anyway, Miranda, she. I have this other shirt, and it's got little fishes all over it. Maybe you've seen it. People call me. The fish are upside down, they look good. Uh, <laughs> it's just part of the design. Uh, our fish was upside down the other day. I tapped on the glass. He turned around. God healed him, and he's still swimming today. <laughs> I thought he was dead for sure. <laughs> I thought, oh, that poor guy. Well, he's alive. <laughs> Like Lil Phil song, he's alive! He's alive! <laughs> it's a good song, Lil Phil. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I had these clothes, right? And Miranda's like, get all these clothes and get rid of them. You're not an old man. <laughs> so, Ray, Ray wears the same size shirt as me, so I'm going to give them to Brother Ray. So when Ray comes in with all these new clothes, just know they were mine. <laughs> that looked real good, on, uh, real good on Brother Ray, I'm sure. But uh, I'll tell you, I don't even know where all that come from. The what? Fishes. Fishes, I know. Uh, yeah. Let's move on. <laughs> what was that? Okay, this is bugging me now. Say point four. point four. Your best days are ahead of you. Yeah. I said only old people would yeah. say something like that. Yeah. So I got all these shirts, right? And I got rid of them because Sister Miranda was calling me an old 
man. And sometimes she says, I act like an old man. All right, so that's why it was. <laughs> Number four, church, say, my best days are ahead of me. My best days are ahead of me. Say it again. My, my best days are ahead of me. Now look at your neighbor if you got one and tell them that. My, my best days are ahead of me. Of me. All right. I like what Randy said. Best days are ahead of you because you married me. <laughs> your best days are ahead of you, church. As a child of God, your best days are always ahead of you. After dealing with tragedy, sometimes it's hard to believe that, isn't it? Yeah. How can my best days be ahead of me after everything I've endured, Pastor? I want to read, or just read, talk a little bit about a woman in the Bible that only gets mentioned maybe around Christmas time. Her name was Anna. Say Anna. Anna, Anna is a lady found in Luke chapter 2. She was a young girl, just probably about maybe 14, 15 years old at the time, who got married and after seven years of marriage, her husband tragically died. So Anna, as a result, with nowhere else to go, the Bible says that she moved herself into the temple and she gave herself unto Christ or gave herself unto the Lord fully through prayers and fastings daily. After going through tragedy, Anna dedicated her life to serving God in the temple. She would pray. She was always in a time and a season of fasting, seeking the face of God. She did that for 77 years years. It's a long time living in the temple. Amen. Serving God with prayer and fasting. Now you would think surely that 77 years serving God in the temple wasn't as good as the first seven years of being married to her husband. Listen to this. It was at the end of her life while in the temple Mary and Joseph show up bringing baby Jesus into the temple. And Anna's just there hanging out. And Anna's like, oh my goodness, that's my Redeemer. That's the Son of God right there. There is the Messiah. <coughs> sure enough, Anna got to see the face of the Son of God. He may have been just a little baby then, but Anna got to see the Lord. Brothers and sisters, Anna's best days were ahead of her. Your best days are ahead of you. Hello. Well, some of us, we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not believing that. We need to claim that. That's right. Jesus goes to a wedding. First miracle that he does. What does he do? He turns the water into the wine. I like what one preacher said. You can also turn the wine back into the water if you need it. <laughs> yeah. But church, Jesus gives it out and he give, uh, they give it to the head guy over the uh, marriage, over the feast. And he said, how is this that they have saved the best wine for the very end of the wedding ceremony? Usually you give the best out first. But they've given it out last. Why is that? Because Jesus was letting us know the best is always for the last. Me and Miranda have been married now almost 12 years. I love her so much more now than I did then. Yeah. 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 Believe it or not, I find her, she was attractive then. Man. I find her way more attractive now. You like the glasses? No wonder I got the glasses. Boy, that is the prettiest girl God ever created. These new glasses help me to see my blessings. 
I believe there's some of us. I believe there's some of us. Our vision has become so bad that we can't see the beauty of the Lord anymore. Man, we used to just, we used to be able to look at Jesus in church and see his spirit moving and sense his spirit moving in our hearts and moving in our lives. And man, we were just like, oh, wow, this is so awesome. No place I would rather be. Right? Oh, I love being in the house of God. But man, our vision has grown dim over the years. And now we're like, I don't really see what all the excitement's all about. I don't really see what all the all the hoopla and hollering's about. What you need is you need God to touch your vision again. And then you'll look at him and you'll go, oh, wow. God, you're beautiful. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done. I love her now more than I did when I first married her. Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, I will keep loving her. You might be surprised. I don't know how to take that, Phil. I might be surprised what she looks like in another 29 years. <laughs> Say, my best days are ahead of me. My best days are ahead of me. <laughs> there was a time in my life, though, when I thought my best days weren't ahead of me. There was a time in my life when I was broke. How many of you ever been broke before? <laughs> so I'm broke right now, preacher. Take up an offering for me. <laughs> I was broke, unemployed, and divorced. I thought, surely God will never use somebody like me. Come on. Who wants to hear from a preacher who's been divorced anyway? She almost died. Yeah, she almost killed me. True story. <laughs> really did. That's why I love her more now. She don't try to kill me anymore. <laughs> you can see the car coming. I know. I can see the car coming. <laughs> That's why we don't do open mic in church. <laughs> but you know what? All these years, there was a time in my life when it was like, life, as I know it, is over. The best days are behind me. Anybody ever felt like that before? Yeah. 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 Best oh, days are behind me. But you know what? I just kept going. Yeah. Sometimes it's one foot in front of another. Well, it's a slow, gradual process. Yeah, but Keep doing it. Keep doing it. And eventually, one day you'll look back and, wow, I've done come out of the valley now. I just had to keep going. That's what you got to do, church. You just got to keep going. And closing, the last thing is this. If I would have, if I would have thrown in the towel in my life, if I would have quit on God, and I believe I was 20. I'm 22 years old. If I would have thrown in the tower at 22, I wouldn't have the family that I have. I wouldn't have the wife that I have. I wouldn't have a church. I wouldn't be a pastor. <laughs> Every blessing that I have in my life is attributed to a determination to just keep going. Your best days aren't behind you. They're ahead of you. Amen. And sometimes things are just what we make them. Amen. Anna, Anna had to just make the best of her life. She said, I can't bring my husband back, but I can give myself to the Lord in prayer and fastings and seeking God. Church, your best days are ahead of you. Why don't we all stand to our feet? Why don't we just stand to our feet and lift up our hands to the Lord? Lord, we love you. We praise you. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. We thank you for your love. Your unending love. And Lord, I pray that if there's people here that have felt like giving up and quitting, the Holy Spirit would quicken them today in the name of Jesus.